Lately, we've been reviewing a lot of retro shoot 'em up games that have been getting re released on the Nintendo Switch and other platforms. I'm all for retro games being put out on new consoles if the price is right and if the game performs fine. And today, we're continuing the trend of looking at retro re releases with Cotton 100% for the Nintendo Switch. So, this game, it's currently for sale physically via strictly limited games, and it's also being released this week digitally alongside another cotton game that we will be taking a look at in a separate video. That game's Panorama Cotton. That's gonna be a cool one. Can't wait to check it out. Now, one interesting thing I noticed that seems pretty cool is they are also releasing Cotton 100% on both a PAL and NTSC compatible Super Nintendo cartridge. Legitimate repros, I suppose. The game was never released outside of Japan to begin with, so there's a lot of options here that are available to anyone who wants to play and own this game. So, Cotton 100%, it was originally released on the Super Famicom back in 1994, and it was the second game in the series. It followed up Fantastic Night Dreams. Similar idea here, you play as Cotton with your little fairy companion Silk on a mission to defeat the bad guys and retrieve your Willow Candy. I mean, I think Cotton has a problem here. I'm not exactly sure what you know, Willow Candy does, but there's definitely more to the story than the obsession with this candy, but that that's really what motivates Cotton to help Silk anyway. I mean, this sounds familiar, right? Especially if you played the first game in the series as essentially Cotton 100% is just a new game based on the first game put out on the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom, right? Essentially the same game, just new in a way. I don't know, you know what I'm saying, right? That used to happen quite often, but there we go. Back to the game. So graphics wise, I think the game looks really good if you're into, you know, old 16-bit Super Nintendo games. Uh, if you played the original re release, I mean, you know what to expect here. Cutesy graphics that do get a, a little bit more disturbing as the game goes on. I mean, I, I didn't experience any kind of slowdown or weird graphics issues with this release at all. Uh, everything looked fine. The, the sprites looked, you know, really nice. I, I love this kind of style of game. Uh, not for everybody, but if you like shooters and, you know, 2D graphics, 16-bit stuff, th this one will be right up your alley, I think. And also, the, the game played very smoothly using a pro controller. Uh, everything reacted fine. There were no extravagant input lag issues with this game, so if that's a concern, I don't think you really have to worry about it. Now, as far as the music and sound effects go, I mean, it's fairly standard fare. Uh, it was okay, nothing extremely memorable, uh, but you know, it can be a, a slightly jarring when the music cuts out when you're approaching a mid-level boss fight. Uh, seems like a fade transition into another song or something could have tied that together a little better, but I, I don't know, it, it's fine. It just cuts out and then comes back on. But speaking of uh, mid-level bosses, I, I did find it odd that some of them posed quite a bit more of a challenge than the end-level bosses. Kind of weird, but overall, as far as challenge goes, it, it has a natural progression of getting more difficult as you progress through the game's seven stages. That's a fairly short one. The game should take most players under an hour to complete. So this is essentially the original release of the game ported to the Switch, but with a few enhancements or quality of life additions, I suppose you could say. You could play the game one of two ways. Standard, which allows you to use rewind, save states, and the unlockable cheats menu, or you can play in challenge mode, which is the original game without any of those features I previously mentioned just like two seconds ago. Just boom, challenge yourself. Don't be a cheating bastard, right? I do enjoy using save states and rewind when I'm learning a game or trying to get better at it, so you know, no shame in the game there. It's there if you want to play it that way, if you want to stick to the original challenge, play challenge mode. Don't tempt yourself, I guess. So I did really enjoy playing this game, but I also have to point out some things that could be perceived as negatives. Maybe even beyond perceived. Some are just straight up negatives, I guess. But the game, digitally, it costs $15 in the US of A. So that may be fine for fans of the series, but is there enough added here? I mean, that's gonna be a subjective thing as far as price point goes. In my opinion, this release is fairly bare bones. It doesn't include an English translation at all, just the original Japanese version. 
So if you care about the cutscenes between stages, you got to figure out, you know, reading Japanese or translating it. I mean, it's not like a really in-depth emotional story or anything, but yeah, no English here. The game, it also had some odd bugs in my pre-release copy. I say pre-release because I'm just not sure um, if it's because I have the game early or if there just were some bugs that weren't caught before finalizing the game. Uh, but like other releases from NN Games, I think that's how you say their name, NN, Inen, NN, whatever, you know who I'm talking about. I'll put their logo up on the screen. Uh, this game does have some fairly interesting visual options, namely the scan line options. You have tons of things that you could tweak in that regard, but then you also do have your basic display options. You can do 4-3, uh, stretch the hell out, uh, pixel perfect aspect ratios among a few, and none of those do anything. Uh, other games that I've received from these guys or have purchased that they've worked on, those display options work. And this one, I, I can't change the aspect ratio from the default setting. Also, a, another thing I noticed was when I completed the game on the standard option, it unlocked the cheats menu. But that was short-lived. I mean, it's not supposed to do that. You're supposed to complete it on challenge mode to unlock cheats. It says it in the you know game select menu. So that's how I figured that part out. So I, I found it kind of odd that when I completed the game, I unlocked the cheats menu on standard. Weird. But then when I exited out of the menu, I lost access to the cheats menu. Uh, just a, a little glitch, I guess. Uh, hopefully these things like with the display options and the cheats menu unlock issue, uh, that one's kind of minor, but it was still kind of weird. Hopefully these things can be fixed for prime time, but I figured it's only fair to mention these couple bugs that I noticed because some people may not even see that it's an issue and hopefully when it's released, uh, you know, it's fixed. But overall, I think it's a great game. Cool little piece of history as far as shoot 'em ups go, cute 'em ups and whatnot. Uh, some might not be able to justify the $15 price tag for, you know, a Super Nintendo game with a limited amount of stuff added to it. But some may jump, you know, to get this game either digitally or physically. The physical version, there's a few additions that come with like extra collectibles and whatnot. But if you just want the standard release, the cartridge in the case with the thing that comes with the manual, it's $35 before shipping. Uh, if the bugs are fixed, I definitely recommend the game to fans of the series. But if you're someone just looking to play a retro shooter, there's many options available on the Switch that may be cheaper and have more content. The choice is yours. Catch you guys in the next one. Appreciate y'all. Bye.